The psychotic Starscream gets a tragic origin story in this video. What's up everyone, James here and we return with Skybound's Transformers. Make sure you hit that like button. So this opens with the end of Soundwave and Starscream's fight. I shouldn't call it a fight, it was more like Soundwave giving Starscream the beatdown of his life. If you are new here, I'll have a link to the playlist at the end of this video. Soundwave had ripped out Starscream's guts and tossed his body over the cliff. Initially, we thought Starscream had fallen to his death, but we see here he landed on some ground below, just narrowly avoiding the pool of lava. At that moment, beaten, broken, and delirious, Starscream becomes filled with memories from his past. We go to a flashback on Cybertron, where Starscream's friends, Genvo and Jetfire, call him by his original name, Yolktar. Now I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly because I couldn't find any correct pronunciation anywhere online, so feel free to correct me in the comments below. Not like one of you won't do it anyways. So what's cool about this is that Skybound took this name directly from Jim Shooters and the great Denny O'Neill's original Transformers treatment back when they were developing the story for the toy line. I'll actually put a link in the pinned comment below of Jim Shooters' secret origin of the Transformers story on his website. So for the rest of this video, during these flashbacks, I'll be calling Starscream Yolktar. Now, Jetfire being close friends with Starscream was hinted at in the first issue. Their friendship, or rivalry depending on the continuity, has always been a well-established concept within Transformers lore. Their friendship began all the way back to the G1 show. In the episode Fire in the Sky, they were shown as friends and colleagues before the war broke out. Also, their friendship is one of the highlights for me in IDW's Transformers Shatter Glass series. And I'll have a link to that as well at the end of this video. We've covered that entire series on the channel. What is a significant change is this other bot, Genvo, being included in their friendship and origins. He is a new Transformers character that Daniel Warren Johnson is using to create a fresh origin for Starscream. And the way it's done is incredible. Jetfire and Genvo both urge Yolktar to stop working so they can all see the passing of something that happens once every 200 years, especially since this is Jetfire's last night on Cybertron before he goes on his mission. The trio flies to Moonbase 2 in order to get the best view of the passing. As they sit and wait, they discuss the fighting between the Autobots and Decepticons. Starscream mentions that his brothers have refused to join a side. We don't know if he's referring to his fellow Seeker brothers, Thundercracker and Skywarp, but if he is referring to them, then that makes the scene of him and Soundwave ripping apart Skywarp disturbing, tragic, and shows just how far gone he is. Genvo reveals that he has joined the Decepticons and tells Jetfire and Starscream they should join as well because they would make an incredible team and he mentions that the leader is unlike anyone he has ever met before. Jetfire refuses telling him that he has chosen his path. His mission is to traverse the stars with maps Yolktar laid out and find a way to save Cybertron. Now Starscream being the one who created the maps for Jetfire is a new detail. I do wish in this issue we got to see him create these maps, along with scenes of him just being a scientist on Cybertron, because there's nothing in this issue that outright states he is a scientist. It's kind of implied or assumed, but maybe we'll see those things in the next issue since this is only part one. Genvo responds to Jetfire saying he believes that there isn't anything out there. Now when he goes to smash these nearby creatures called Turbosex because they annoy him, Starscream stops him and explains that they're harmless, beautiful creatures who help clean the gears of Cybertron's moons, making their lives run smoother. So as we see here, the psychotic, brutal, and twisted Starscream we've gotten to know very well in this series was once Yolktar, a kind scientist who cared about life and his friends. Now the thing they were waiting for arrives, we see the passing of a huge titanic robot flying overhead. And this robot is Omega Supreme. This is definitely the biggest we've ever seen Omega Supreme or any Omega Sentinel depicted. He is easily the size of a Titan. Suddenly, Yogtar gets the idea of wanting Omega to see him and his friends. So he breaks into the Cybertronian Defense Force, where we see Cup as a guard for the entrance. Once they successfully get in, Yolktar opens an ammunition depot and uses one of their grenades hoping to create a big enough explosion for Omega to notice them, which he successfully does. And when Omega notices them, Yolktar waves at him, 
and Omega waves back. The trio escapes before Cup captures them. Later, Jetfire sets out to leave. Yuktar tries to talk him into staying a few more days for recalculations. However, Jetfire insists on leaving now because every day they wait, Cybertron's demise comes closer. He hugs his two closest friends and says his heartfelt goodbye to them. After he flies off, Yuktar says, I'm going to miss him. But when Jemvo replies, don't worry, you still have me around, Yuktar says, and for that, I'm very thankful for Jenvo. This makes the reunion of Jetfire and Starscream in the first issue sad and really emphasizes the shock and horror he must have felt when he saw just how much his friend had changed into this vicious killer. Sometime later, the war between the Autobots and Decepticons breaks out fully on Cybertron. Yuktar hears explosions and when he walks outside of his lab, he sees Genvo fighting alongside Shockwave and what could be Overcharge or Blitzwing against the Autobots. Suddenly, a stray missile destroys his lab and he gets caught up in the explosion. Genvo sees this and goes to help him. He tells Yuktar they need to run and that the Autobots came out of nowhere and are on their tails. He and Yuktar are running for their lives, perfectly depicting the chaos of war. Suddenly though, Genvo is shot. Yuktar holds him as he is slowly fading away. Genvo's last words are, You did it, Yuktar. You yelled at the gods. You screamed the stars into seeing us. He ends up dying in Yuktar's arms. Yuktar replies, screaming, Genvo, no brother, no. While grieving, Yuktar sees the one responsible for Genvo's death, Optimus Prime and the Autobots. Now we don't know for sure if it was in fact the Autobots, but if it was, what if this is the dark side of Optimus Prime Alita hinted at in the last video? This side of him that was around during the early days of the Great War. Optimus may have been the one who inadvertently created one of the most psychotic Transformers who caused so much death on Earth. The shock of this memory awakens Starscream, bringing us back to the present day. He awakens to his legs being melted off his body. He crawls away from the lava and falls back into unconsciousness. At that moment, this group of humans find him. They chain him up and attempt to hoist him. This group of humans is revealed to be a Mars unit with their own his tank. The group's commanding officer says this is a game changer. Now his identity remains hidden from us in this issue. We only get the names of two of his subordinates, Private Martin, the guy drawing here, and Private Raz, the woman on top of the tank. The only thing we learn through their conversation about this commander is when he asks Private Martin if he knows who his father is, he answers, yeah, the best to ever do it. The commander replies, damn right, a genuine American hero. Now that is a clear evocation of the G.I. Joe's franchise's usual, a real American hero tagline, which could indicate that this commander's father was possibly a former member of G.I. Joe. Unfortunately for this commander, the his tank isn't strong enough to hoist Starscream's body. The chains break, crashing Starscream's body back onto the ground. This commander ends up going off on his unit, complaining about how he's been given command of this lowly unit when his dad was celebrated and worshipped. The guy is really living off the legend of his father. He considers his current position and status embarrassing. But with the power of Starscream within his grasp, he plans to change that. This is definitely going to lead to the resurrection of Starscream. Returning to the flashback, Yuktar carries Genvo's body away from the battlefield. Now he ends up tripping and Genvo's body falls to the ground. Yuktar stares at his body and wonders what's left for him on Cybertron. His work in his lab was destroyed and one of his best friends is dead while the other is off planet exploring for who knows how long and even if he will ever return. At that moment, Megatron approaches and says, you can join us. You can avenge your friend and your clan. You can be a warrior of the new Decepticon order. Megatron transforms into a tank-like pistol for Yuktar to hold and says, tell me young one, what did your brothers call you? Inspired by Genvo's dying words, 
Yogtar answers, my name is Starscream. Starscream's origin is so good so far, my god. A dying friend's last words being the mechanism used to change his name and identity is poetic. Also, Megatron's pistol mode being a mixture of his classic form and his modern one is actually pretty cool. However, it having tank treads on it makes no sense to me. This makes me theorize, what if Megatron is a double changer? What if he has his classic pistol mode and his tank mode? That would be insane and make him even more dangerous. Comment below your thoughts. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Check out the Skybound Transformers plays right here. And if you also want to check out the IDW Shattered Glass series, it's right here as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Help me reach 50,000 subscribers. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, hit that follow button. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Other than that, have an awesome day. And always remember every day to go beyond.